Hello everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. I am going to share this information to my group. I don't know why I feel like it's so dark. Oh my God. Okay, let me show this information to my group. I hope you guys are having a happy Saturday. I wanted to bring you some information on um, just a subject I've been talking about for years. And that is that their uh, co collection companies are borderline illegal. And I have posted an article um, in my group and on my personal page about the new government shutdown. Now, it, I mean, crackdown. If anybody, hi, Nicole. Thank you for joining me, everyone coming in the room. Um, I've been talking about this for years. I mean, since 2015. And um, this is hard for people to grasp. I mean, I have made videos, content, and, you know, people, and I'm hoping from this article that maybe now people will get this. And I have learned this, the letter packages that I sell, and I learned this simple truth way back in 2006. I have personally took these steps myself. I have explained these steps to people and why collection companies are borderline illegal and how you are making it valid. I have preached this to the cows come home. And now I feel vindicated because maybe sometimes people don't believe you until an outside source come and say that it's true. So here's the rundown. I constantly tell people over and over again, if you got a collection company as a third party reporting on your credit report, the first thing you must do is a debt validation letter sent directly to the collection company, not the bureaus, not to your mama house, not to uh, the, the uh, uh, FTC, Federal Trade Commission, not until your attorney general, not until the sky, not until whatever somebody tell you. You send the debt validation le letter directly to the collection company. Please grasp this understanding, people. Debt validation is your legal right. In order to make that company prove that they have a right to collect on the debt. I hope that's standing. That's it. It's not magic in the letters. It's law for you. Okay? The reason why is what the FTC is cracking down on. There is what's called phantom debt. These companies maybe not even purchase the debt. Just get your name, call up, tell that you owe them something. They had some information from a progressive. They had some information and got your name. You might not even owe the debt. Call you up, send you a letter. And because you sit there and you are making a verbal contract with them over the phone, now you built a business relationship. You start to agree like a marriage. You agree to honor, respect, take a vow and in front of people, in front of witnesses. This is why they record your conversations. And now with a divorce, you got to go through a whole legal process. This is what they're doing to you. And they know they're doing this to you. So let's break it down on levels because I want people to get this understanding. Number one, you need not to speak to these people over the phone. If you feel that you're not educated enough or you don't have enough confidence you simply 
take a debt validation letter, whatever company is reporting it, send it directly to the collection company. Not like these credit repairs when you send rounds of letters to the bureaus and that, that's foolishness. It's foolishness. They get paid off of that foolishness. You must first send the debt validation, deal with that company, send it to them. The reason why, like I tell you, there's the simple law of contracts. I am not an attorney. I am just telling you about my own experience. So this does not constitute legal advice, but there's a simple law of contracts. You have to bind an obligation. You can do that verbally in writing or in the terms of using a service like a taxi. You get in a cab, you get a ride, a service somewhere, and if you jump out the cab and not pay for it, you agree to pay them by using the service. You go to a restaurant, order a meal. If you run out, you ate the meal and left, then you agree to the terms of the service. You receive the service. So when it comes to debt validation, because a debt is owed somewhere, it doesn't mean any Joe Schmo have a legal right to collect on that debt. What they're saying is, we bought this debt. Okay, if you did buy the debt, where's the receipt? Where's the proof? Number one, where is my agreement with that original creditor giving them even the right to sell that debt to anyone? Period, point blank, it's that simple. People make it, your letter, I sent the letter and it did not work. That's not the point of the letter, honey. It's the legal process. So if you're not grasping your right on this, you don't have the confidence or the knowledge. This is why I don't believe in, oh, I have somebody else fix my credit. I ain't got time to learn. Ignorance being perpetuated because you prefer because it's comfortable for you to be ignorant then to take the time to stop with uh who in the shade room is doing this to simply understand people come up with the craziest ideas why they don't have time to understand point blank period you got everything the same like everybody else God gave us all two things the same, 24 hours, seven days a week. And what you do with your time is your business. And one thing you need to start learning is learning about this credit system. You have to give the original creditor permission to sell that debt. How would you find out? It's in the contract. Do you have, did you have a verbal contract? with that original creditor. If it's a credit card, when you receive that card, they usually have a contract uh, uh, attached to that credit card that you have to sign to the terms and send back. Nobody ever does that. Very rarely do people do that. You just sign the back of the card and start using. So what is established there you an original creditor because you're using the service of the card, you have a contract with them. But where did you ever give them permission to sell the debt? You would have to have your signature and somewhere in that contract, it should give them permission to sell the debt, but that doesn't happen. So that collection company, you need to ask them number one, where is my original contract signed ink with the original creditor giving them permission to sell the debt? That's it. Many of you, even with evictions, they'll send you a copy of your lease. Did your lease even say in that lease between you and the landlord, did it say, say somewhere in there that you agreed to sell? or agreed, gave your permission for that debt to be sold. It's quite simple, quite simple. Next, what you need to ask them, accurate accounting. 
of the whole history. Who say that you owe anything? Who say that you didn't pay that? They have to show proof. They said they bought the debt. Third point. If they bought the debt, where's the receipt? Understand there's many people that had a collection. One company had contact them. Then a different company had contact them because they'll resell this debt. And a lot of these companies are just get your name, call you up, and you just pay them because of not knowing, you're scared, and you get on the phone and start talking, and now they got you. You're agreeing to do business. You paid them, so you agreed to do business with them. And so now the uh, Federal Trade Commission are cracking down on these companies this year because they do a lot of phantom debt illegal debt practices they are making things up you might have paid for that bill and they are in essence now coming to you having you to repay a bill and you're thinking oh to make it go away and now you got a paid collection tanking your credit score oh but i thought it would go away who told you that that don't go away Understand when it comes to collection companies, their power stands in their relationship with the credit bureaus. The only leverage they have over you is the right for them to report that information to the credit bureau. And for them to be able to do that, they must report at least 5,000, 2,000 to 5,000 names a month, some kind of information. Because the bureaus are not bureaus. They're private corporations that suck up and get as much information on you and your life in order to sell it to other companies to ruin your life. That's why I keep telling you the bureaus ain't nobody. They're nobody. They're nothing different than McDonald's. But people are so scared. They're so scared. I'm so scared. You're so scared. Man up. Stop being scared. Get some knowledge. And man up. You don't have to be scared. They're a corporation. Point blank period. They make millions off of predatory practices off you. This is why the Fair Credit Reporting Act has been passed by Congress and the Fair Debt Collection Practices have been passed by Congress. And that's your right to validate the debt people to validate the debt, to send a debt validation letter. There's no magic letters, you guys. So get that out of your head. You are exercising your legal right. That's what they know. So once you can grasp that, that's what I can do legally? Yeah, it's your legal right. So that's why you send a debt validation letter to back them up, to make them prove that you owe them a debt. You don't know them. I never met you before in my life. I never got an Uber ride or a hamburger. Why would I pay you anything? And what they will send you is a bill, a Verizon bill, a whatever bill, credit card bill. And people, oh, they send me a bill. Well, who name on you? Um, Capital One. Who are they? Uh, so-and-so ABC collection company. So what does that, what, 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 do, how does that connect that you owe them? How does that, how do that make you owe them? We all have bills. Is anybody getting this? We all have bills. You got a car note right now. Can I go to you and say, give me your, your car note money. Here's your, here's your bill. Here's your bill that you owe to Ford financing. Pay me. No. So this is what they're doing and they've been extorting you out of money the whole time. And I've been saying this for years. So in turn, when you send the next, the next letter, the reply letter, I have them in my package, what you're letting them know and why my package name names is somebody going to get sued for me. That's what I do. Somebody going to learn the day up in here. Because the next step is, let me show you how you lying on me. 
And so a lot of people can't grasp. Well, what do you, let me show you how you lying on me. Number one, you haven't proved a darn to anything because you sent me a bill with somebody else name on it and that ain't you. And because a bill or a debt is old, don't give you a legal right to collect on a debt. So you're running around here slapping this stuff on my credit report. I got proof. I got copies of my credit report. You're lying, saying I owe you a debt. So let me go to my local court in my county and in my state where they're set up and they better be set up because it's illegal for them in some states. If they're not a registered collection company, let me go ahead and hit you with this suit. And I'm going to hit you, Paul, you, Sally, you, Johnny, name and names. And then your company for defamation of character because you're lying on me. You're costing me money. So if you're suing me, this is what I did. Or if you have a debt collection for 500, I'm suing you for a good 800. And I'm naming names because this is defamation of character. And you know what they do? Call me with their attorney, go like a card house, and then cut me my check. And take that off my credit report because part of my negotiations is 30 days. This is me. I'm just telling you my experience. This is me. This don't constitute legal advice, but this is me. And you're going to know, learn today. Constantly what I'll do, take this off in 30 days, put that in writing, any derogatory marks that you have made. And send me a check. 300, 200. Send me some for my agony. There you go. Collection done. Send over my check. Well, first they'll send over your paperwork, in mail, usually FedEx. They might do this right before the lawsuit. Because after all, if you're not understanding the strategy, it takes a uh, LLC, any other company needs an attorney to represent them. Then they have to bring in all those individuals into court for representation. And they only bought this debt for maybe $50, $25. So it ain't worth that. And if I win, which I am, I got enough proof. Guess what? If I win, them personally, it's going to be on their credit reports. And so what I try to teach you is to build leverage. How to build leverage. Do I have my evidence? Sure do. I already have my original debt validation letter that I reached out. I had their correspondence. I don't care what they reply back. I'm just building my case. And they always fall. Haven't hit the court yet. But I have collected my checks since 2008. That's why I don't have collections. Because, oh, happy day when I do. I get paid. And I have said this, showed this, proved this over and over again. But you have the same people. And now you have the Federal Trade Commission finally getting involved on a federal level. But I tell you, the quickest way is to handle it through your state. That's why collections is nothing to me. Absolutely nothing. And I saw somebody had a comment with child support. Um, child support, unfortunately, that's a different kind of uh, debt. If you're not well aware of that, uh, that's, that's a whole different kind of debt. That's between you and whoever you had a child with. So that's a whole nother level of obligation. If you're looking at um, student loans, that's a whole nother level of obligations. You can thank, you know, your Congress for how they handle student loan debt. That is the federal government bag and money. And so therefore, it ain't happening. You're going to pay them folks. So just figure out how you're going to pay them. See if you can, because you can't bankrupt that off. Your best bet is not to get involved with them, but uh, or if unless you are in some kind of program 
where you should already know about it. Most people that go in certain uh, fields or industries that know that they're going to get a student loan credit or forgiveness as a teacher in certain areas, they pretty much are aware of that. But if you have those kind of debts, that's a whole different category. So please be aware of that. So it's just some things. This is what education is there for. This is why the information is there. So you can make right choices before all of this. But you want to make sure that you do not just sit there and pay collection companies. It will make your situation worse and not better. And they are able, you're going to restart that debt. Say if that debt been sitting on there for five years and you only have another two years before it fall off. If you pay it, update as a paid negative item, tank your credit score. And now they have a whole nother seven years to report that you reactivate the clock. So your best way to fight collections is simply don't start off with paying them. You will just simply go ahead and send a debt validation letter point blank period even if it's in the name of your own original creditor you can if it's an attorney name on it and they suing you for the original creditor always can try counter suing naming names and I have in the past simply said that information is not accurate defamation if you saying I owe a hundred dollars and this was advice I gave to a very close loved one. You said that, well, or two people, matter of fact, two people. But anywho, say if that debt, that that credit card company is saying, oh, you owe us uh, $500 because they put some interest on it. I don't owe you $500. Even if I owe you $100 and you saying it's $500, you're lying on me. Defamation. Because I might have actually got approved for that apartment if it's $500. So that's how you can battle that. Those are strategies. And even in that situation, when that person said, all this interest is wrong. I told them, tell them all the interest is wrong. It's all of this is inaccurate. They end up releasing it. And that was that. Because you have to make them have something on your table on the table so hopefully that would give you guys information and i had it said uh somebody have a question saying do late payments from five years ago still affect my credit score um anything over two years is really not calculating in but it might um payment history you know it, you might have negative but not really if it's over two years even a year i would personally work on other items before going back for late payments if they're that old unless they are stopping me for actually getting credit hi my beautiful kiki thank you for joining me hopefully you guys i thank each and every one of you guys for coming in the room uh beautiful kiki lamont hayes he will promote this message because not to put him out there he employed the strategy himself that i'm talking about collection companies so it is not a forest. If you got a chance, read the article on how the Federal Trade Commission is going after these collection companies. Because like I keep telling you guys, a lot of y'all paying this and you never owed it in the first place. And now you're giving them a legal right in order to report that debt. So I hope this is helpful, you guys. If you need the letter packages, I will put the link so if you got a collection, don't wait till these people sue you. I will warn you on that. If you don't want, you see an attorney in your state with that debt, baby, they getting ready to sue you. You better contact me ASAP Rocky. You better hit me up because they're positioning. If you see that company in your state, they sold in your state, they getting ready to run down and sue you. And then once they sue you, they hit you with that lawsuit. That debt validation is out the window at that point. You have to fight it on your local level and you need to always speak and it's best to seek an attorney's advice. 
So I hope this is informational. You guys be blessed, be educated and stay on top of your credit. Bye bye.